Hi, and thank you again for joining us at New England Veterans Liberty House for Veterans Serving Veterans. Uh, we're going to continue on the topic with uh, Habitat, Habitat for Humanity, my apologies, Merrimack Valley area, uh, with Roxanne and Mr. Randy. So please, uh, let's get into uh, now with this segment. I want to get into actually the, uh, the uh, Veterans Home Built here in the city of Lawrence, which Again, I was reared, raised and reared here. Uh, so I think that um, I, I'm excited, obviously, yeah. to uh, see this happening and whatever, obviously, we said that New England Veterans Liberty House or our business could do to help to um, facilitate, you know, your efforts, then we're on board and you know that. Uh, Lawrence Veteran Service Officer, Jamie Melendez, okay. uh, good guy, and he's on board as well. But let's start, um, okay. how did you guys end up acquiring that property, please? We've noticed a national interest in veterans' builds, and it didn't take long before locally uh, it started getting some traction through the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center and the Lawrence City Council <coughs> and Mayor. Um, Which the mayor, by the way, is, is a, a, veteran. a veteran himself. Dan Rivera is a great supporter. Uh, the City Council did everyone a favor when they designated a, a vacant piece of land that they owned on Phillips Street for a veterans' build. And so uh, the city council approved uh, at a really good price sure. the sale of this land to the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center and they in turn talked to us about doing the build and how can this work mm -hmm. and uh, long story short the path of least resistance was for Habitat to buy it from the Veterans Northeast sure. Outreach Center. The city attorney here Charles Body, a real good guy yep. Yep. helped us structure all the documents uh, on that sale so that the original intent of the city council yeah. was, was being kept in place. And next thing you know, this past fall, uh, with Jamie Melendez and with mm -hmm. the other departments, we cleared the land, started the excavation, the basement has been poured, and uh, it's underway. It's a little slower over the winter time, but sure, it's underway. Sure, it's to be expected. So the foundation right now is poured. It is, right? and, Good. and uh, we're off and running. There's been a. This will not be our last veterans build. The support, I hope not. It's the support has been. I, yeah. I'm so overwhelmed. The funding, volunteers, uh, interest from veterans organizations. Yeah. It's been really terrific. Uh, Roxana is going to have the first step of the family selection process for veterans families coming up on March 3rd and 5th. So um, if you don't mind real quick, let's switch over to you real quick and tell us a little bit about um, that process and tell us a little bit when it's going to be taking place and where it's going to be taking place um, in hopes that you get you get a really good turnout hopefully, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, are we going to have a meeting on March 3rd at um, 6th? Uh, that's a Thursday. So 6 p.m. March 3rd, 6 yes. p.m. That's a Thursday. And where is that going to be held? Uh, that's going to be in uh, 1 Jackson Street, the uh, Lauren Heritage yep. Park. Great, great building, beautiful building. Yes. Um, we usually have two meetings mm -hmm. just to give flexibility to some uh, family. If they cannot go to one you meeting, the they can go to the yep. other one. Good. Good. Um, uh, I would like them to call me just to make sure how many people are, are going to go. So to you the want meeting. them to RSVP you, which is yes. very smart because if not, you're going to have a line down the, you <laughs> yeah. know, down to Essex Street. Yeah. We know. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope so too. Absolutely. And these are going to be veterans' families, correct? Yes. Yes. Just veterans' families. Yes. Uh, uh, could it be widowers? Could it be spouses of veterans? Yes. Could it be Dependence of veterans? Yes. Really? Veterans know a document uh, called a DD-214. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what the families need, whether it's, um, you know, a mom or a dad who's a veteran. Yep. Uh, it might be um, the spouse of a deceased veteran. Yep. In that case, are you guys going to ask for other documents like a marriage license or anything of that mm -hmm. sort? Possibly. Yes. Okay. Uh, but you know. Well, the reason I ask, and I'm sorry sure. I ran to cut you off, is because uh, we, we obviously, our nonprofit organizations, we assist uh, widowers and dependents. Um, and it's not, it's not that we don't believe the individual that's coming in yeah. is just for us to, have, have, to, documentation. Document. have to document yeah because if I get an audit and they're gonna be oh, like well I'm not gonna yeah. reimburse you mm -hmm. back so that's why I asked would it be a marriage place and in, in the case of dependents I also need some type of say birth certificate of their mm -hmm. say either deceased parents that were veterans if not a you know parents coming in with the individual and that's why I asked yes yeah. uh, the meeting usually take like um, 45 minutes to an hour depending how many questions they have um, we explain everything, how the program works, um, if... Qualifications and stuff like that? Yes. Um, Maybe? We, we explain 
everything in that meeting that they that, that they that need to bring to you. Yes. Okay. And then um, they will be clear and whatever they need. Yeah. That's why yeah, we you take. Be, well, it's smart for you, right? Because it's going to make your life a lot easier. Yes. <laughs> when the process comes, right? Mm -hmm. Their path to home ownership will be easier if they get the right information. And all the documents to meeting. you. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. I agree. But that that meeting is just being able to say, okay, these are the prerequisites. You're going to yes. need this A, B, C, D, and you hopefully, should. you know, the the criteria thresh level. That's that meeting, right? That meeting you're going to be able After to disseminate the meeting, that information. They usually get an application with the list of documents that they need to bring. Okay. Um, after now, the meeting, if they understand how the program works, they will take the application. Some people doesn't like how it works, and they yeah, say no. Yeah, because maybe no. some criteria. But yes. let me ask questions. Is it is it both? Is it in Spanish and English? Or just I usually d do it in both languages. Okay. But uh, I hope in this one, I don't have to do it in, in Eng I mean in Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Well, you well don't surprise me. There is a lot of Spanish. Um, uh, veterans here in the city, so you might get to get it. And I, I know you guys sent it. I'm sorry I didn't get that back to you guys, but I know that. Was it you that sent me, um, I don't know, a, a, an email or sent my staff and then I forwarded to them about the uh, percentage of veterans yes, that were bilingual? That was you? Yes. Did you get that answer? Yes. Okay, good. So out of that answer that you got from Jamie, I'm sure, because you didn't get it probably from me or somebody in my okay. office, um, how, many, how many of that percentage were uh, Hispanics? Do you know? No, no. Okay. Because okay, I forward that, um, that was sent to um, somebody else, okay. and he told me that he got the information. So I will just give he you got it before I got to the office. Then I got to prepare to come to. Because I have a perfect candidate that I'm going to submit, and she's Beautiful. a widower okay. of a veteran, and her English is very limited. Okay. But she's a oh. widower of, of a veteran, and I think she'd be a perfect okay. candidate. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's why I asked, because, I mean, that, again, there's like you mentioned, too, during our, our meeting, um, once you explain the criteria level, um, there's people that might not, you know, it's, move forward with the process. It's not for everyone. Yeah. 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 Uh, because, income Because you guys, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Ahead. Yeah. You, you guys are still, um, I mean, there's a mortgage involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? There's a mortgage involved. So uh, first, we got to make sure, you know, is it cost effective? For you, because you don't want to get someone at home and then two months later, you know, find themselves in a deeper hole because they can't nope. meet their obligations. So that's what I mean, and I'm yeah. hoping that mm -hmm. you know the candidates that you get are are able to um, handle this process. So. Sometimes candidates in the first round find out that they're not quite qualified. Maybe they have a oh, really bad ready. credit score. Yeah. They're not ready for yeah. it. Uh, they're not ready to put in the sweat equity hours, whatever the reason might be. You're correct. But sometimes they come back the next year or the year after that and do more qualify. Prepared. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, more prepared. Now, is, is, um, are you going to be available anytime for any questions or concerns? Because, I mean, a an hour, it's great. But, you know, they might have <laughs> questions after they take the packet. Yes. Are you the one that's going to be the contact person yes. to answer those questions? Yes. Good. After, uh, let, me, let me go a little step further, and I'm sorry that I'm digging, mm -hmm. but I want to be able to dot my I's and cross my T's on this one. So if uh, any event that some of those individuals that go to that meeting that find themselves not fully under uh, understanding the process, and I know that you have another one in March 5th, mm -hmm. so let's just play the devil's advocate and say after March 5th, they still don't understand the process very well. Would you then maybe set up a small yes. meeting with the yes. individuals? I usually do. With Good. each family. Good for you. Yes. Good for you. And I try to explain them uh, more uh, clear and specific. Yeah. Um, and I usually they understand after they meet with me. I'm sure. Well, yes. you, you're you a perfect <laughs> example. I mean, you, you did it from A all the way to Z. Yes. So, I mean, uh, I would feel comfortable talking to you because mm -hmm. you, I mean, you, you've been through the process. You know, you know yes. what it takes to get mm -hmm. there. So what is it that you, they, they would need, they wouldn't need anything really in March 3rd. It's no, just, no, uh, just, it's just a, you know, more of a informational type mm -hmm. uh, yes. uh, meeting. And, and then it, as well with the March 5th, it, again, that's more informational. There's nothing that they should bring. Maybe a pen and paper, maybe wouldn't that, hurt. take yeah. some notes. and Maybe okay. if they would like to take some notes, it's good okay. to bring some um, paper. But n not necessary. Yeah, because everything is in that packet that you yes. will you They will take offer. the packet home and look through it, and it explains what kind of documentation they need to assemble with their application, mm -hmm. including their income tax forms. Mm -hmm. We take a look at income, and generally the income range, generally speaking, is between twenty to $50,000 of household income. 
annually. That now, that can change with family size. Exactly, of and situation will dictate because you know yeah. family dynamics and whatnot change Absolutely. month to month, so you never know. My question is, who came up with this criteria or threshold level that I see here? A family of three, uh, anywhere from nineteen hundred nineteen thousand to almost forty thousand. Family of four of twenty two thousand and forty four thousand. Five twenty three thousand, almost twenty four thousand, almost forty eight thousand. Who came up with this threshold, and what formula did you guys follow for that? It was because I have, and I'm sorry I cut you off, I'm sorry, I have such a difficult time with that. And the mm -hmm. reason is because there's so many agencies mm -hmm. out there that have different thresholds and criteria levels. And I get it and I understand that. Um, in our case, we have one or two awarding agencies. And sometimes when you get that money, this nonprofit has one criteria, but the money's coming from the same place. And then this, you know, so how did this come about? So what criteria? These are income brackets that normally would not qualify for a traditional bank mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it just, they just don't have the kind of income uh, that, that most bank mortgage programs would be able to work mm. with them. Uh, and uh, on the other end of the scale, Habitat isn't in a position to place uh, people in homes if they don't have any income. Right, uh, because right. you alluded to it earlier, yeah. we don't want a foreclosure right away exactly. or failure. Yeah. We want you're, to you're setting people up for failure. It, it yeah. really yeah. does, yeah, and do so our board of directors felt that an income range between 25 percent to 50 percent of the median, the median for this income. area okay. was the target group that we wanted to work with. So the median income of the Lawrence area, 25 to 50 percent of that median is the target range that we're looking at. And as you said, it, it varies depending on how many sure. children are in the sure, house. Sure. We have uh, three generation uh, families, you know, where their grandparents living in the home and, yes, and that exactly. sort of thing. And yeah. so that's all factored in. Uh, credit scores are checked. Um, and uh, we, we also do background checks. And, and then, as I said, classes are required in budgeting and home ownership. That's awesome. Uh, because some families... I, I agree with that, it, Randy. I these really are all do. first, uh, first uh, 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 really owner do. families. Yeah, and, yeah and, and it's scary. It's it, scary, and you need to learn. Uh, yeah. You need to make sure you, you 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 have a really good sense of your finances. Finances, and you know, it's, it's when you're a homeowner, you know, you don't. You're there now. You need to just be able to stabilize yourself and make sure that you're there for the next 25, yes. 30 years. So Our homeowners beautiful. pay a zero percent mortgage. My hats off to you. Thank you. Yeah. Our homeowners pay a mortgage at zero percent interest, but along with that mortgage, wow. every month they escrow enough money to cover their taxes, their insurance and then a little maintenance fund for the future. No so kidding. 20, 25 years from now, if your roof is starting to leak or the, the front porch is falling off, the siding needs repair, they've already got no money set aside kidding. to fix it up. And so you guys take, you guys are the uh, catalyst of doing that, taking that yeah. percent. Yes. No yeah. kidding, I we didn't know that part, it. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We escrow the money and then when they're ready to Good apply to for it, they do. So uh, go to any block to in go. the street and you'll see that the Habitat for Humanity homes are usually some of the best maintained homes on the block. Yeah, good. I mean, they have, yeah, they have a little pool there to mm -hmm. go to and yep. not, not, you know, not come out of the pocket at the last minute sometimes. You don't have, I mean, roofs cost, you know, anywhere from they 10 do. to 15,000. As you would you know, know. Exactly. That's your business. Yeah, yeah, 10 to 15 grand, easy, and that's being modest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. good for you. I'm glad you guys do that. I mean, it's just not, not only, you're, what, I, what I see right now, that's a formula for success. It's a good model. Perfect model. Yeah. Not good, perfect model. This I would will just be add that seriously because <laughs> you're help, you're helping these guys understand. And listen, you as a homeowner, um, when I became a homeowner and I started fixing stuff, I'm like, oh man, I wish I was renting again. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but then, but, but then really? you lose. Oh yeah, I did. I really did because you know now I'm doing everything myself, right? When I was renting, yeah. I'm like, hey, you got to fix this, right? So, and yeah. if you don't fix it, what happens? You know, it's just gonna get yeah. worse and the tears. So now you're gonna come out of pocket more, yeah. and so and sometimes you don't have that capital really. Right, because stuff <laughs> happens. But that's just uh, it's such a great recipe and great, great model. You know what I mean? That you don't have to worry about that. You know, a year from now something happens. Let me ask that um, real quick. Going to that, it's is within that year of any type of uh, repairs might need to happen. Who covers that? Is that there are warranties on parts of the builds? Yep. Um, and uh, that lasts for usually about a year. And the other thing that we have for these families is a mentor, somebody off of our board or a successful family or just somebody who wants to mentor a That's Habitat it. family, there you go. Example. And they stay with them and so uh, they talk to them about making their mortgage payments and, and keeping their home up, repairing things and if the families have any questions, that's usually their first point of contact is their mentor. And 
why is this this way or what should I do about that's this huge. you know it is that's and the mentors relief, love it man. these family partners it's really gratifying how for them. I'm gonna go back to you how are you doing in your home so far how long have you been in your home four years four years any type of repairs or anything that you had to do no, in your I home try so far? to keep everything <laughs> you know why because it was built good that's, yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> that, that should have been the answer no it was really built really good no. Yeah. oh good 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 for you good for you um, yeah I think that again many people fail to realize that you know that you know you got to like look at not just the present, but five years down the road or ten years down the road. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, it could repairs could become really costly. Yes. In 31 years, we've only had two foreclosures. Uh, wow. and that's a pretty good rate. Uh, pretty uh, good rate. Yeah. I consider that to be an <laughs> yeah, awesome rate. It really that's is. That's not bad yeah. at all. And and those stories, as unfortunate as they were, were an opportunity for another family because Habitat went in and and took the home back. Uh, rehabbed it, remodeled it, got it ready, and put a new Habitat family put in there. Family. So, yeah. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump real quick and get, please hold that thought because I have a, a, a question. And then in regards to that we had a small conversation in Jamie's office about you know you're not allowed to sell the home, and if you do, it's gonna go. So hold that thought real quick. But my question in regards before we uh, get on a topic, the um, packet that you're gonna be providing on the third and the fifth is that also bilingual? Yes. Okay, great. That, uh, that we good. usually provide one application in Spanish and one application in English. Good. Okay. Because that, yes. that, again, that'll be helpful because there, there's going to be, uh, I know that my widower, again, don't, don't. Uh, attached speak to application, I usually put a list of things that they have to bring okay. and they have to be bilingual. Good. Bilingual. And so, my question then again, let me go back to you, uh, Randy, is um, I know that you, you stated that they just can't go out and sell the home to just anyone for an astronomical price. So it has to be, they do stay there. And first of all, how long do they need to stay in that property mm -hmm. before they could even consider selling? And then second, um, what's the criteria level for you guys to move forward and sell? The average mortgage length is 20, 25, or 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what the family can afford. We structure that so that their mortgage, household mortgage expense is not more than 30% of their total income. Total income. And so it's different for each family. Sure. But they can sell at any time, but Habitat has a right of first refusal to match the okay. sales price, that uh, the offer that they okay. would get, so that we can essentially uh, buy the home back and, and put, put another Habitat property. family in there. Yes. Yeah. There are other ways of doing Good. that, land trusts and other arrangements, but generally speaking, we want these Habitat homes to remain in the affordable housing pipeline right. for a long time. Right, which is a, 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 a very smart to do because again, you're paying it forward to somebody else that might not be able to otherwise to afford, you know, going out on their own. Well and put. it's 0% interest, man. I, I, I wish I would have met you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great model. It is. It really is. But it's it important is. for most it people is. who donate to Habitat and yeah, who volunteer to understand that, that's that the families actually are paying something yeah. and helping to Correct. build the and home. Let me just uh, bring it up there. It's not that they're going to come up here and there's a lottery and you're going to get a free home no. and then everything is, you know, hogging dory and you're not going to pay bills. That's not the way it is. Um, I, I think it's just giving this opportunity to you, to you all um, and to become homeowners, but then take a little bit of pride and you're actually paying for your home and yeah. they just habitat for humanity in minds right now just to put it in lame's term is just making this process a hundred times easier for you to go through that and to go into a bank system well put i mean lame's yeah. term right yeah. it's it's a perfect opportunity it's a win-win situation all around and this mm -hmm. one is the total focus is on veterans or veterans families or the the, the spouse of a veteran and and uh uh, we're excited about it, and as I mentioned earlier, it, uh, it's really been gratifying to see the interest from donors, uh, volunteers, veterans groups, foundations, and other organizations yeah. that have been really generous towards this well, concept. Well, let me tell you, I mean, um, there's a lot of people in this country here that don't favor the war, the war too much, right? But they support the veterans. That's right. Right? And there's just a lot of people out there that don't know how to go about it. And then they want to help. They generally generally care, generally want to help, and sometimes they don't know how to go about it. And this is a great way to go up there and show your support. Because again, um, same thing when they call into our organization, is that they're not favoring what's going on right now in the world, but that's not the gentleman that decided to raise his right hand and take the oath for this country and defend it, right? So, I mean, th so that, that's been a big change since obviously the Vietnam era, right? You know, because that was a pretty brutal time for our veterans coming home. Um, and we're getting better at it, obviously. And there's a lot of people out there really nowadays that support veterans' causes. And, mm -hmm. and 
we need more of that because, you know, you, let, let's be honest. When our veterans come back, there's only really one place that you could come back and find services. That's the Veterans Administration yeah. Hospital. Mm -hmm. That's it, really. Other than maybe your VFWs, but I'm talking federal side, sure. right? Yeah, VFWs, American Legion, our organizations, nonprofit organizations. Let's take that out of the equation for a second. But that's what you have. And that's not a lot of, um, you know, opportunities, really. And then you hear all the horror stories that going on in the VA system now, and they still, they're, they're, maybe I should just plead the fifth on this one right now. <laughs> but um, they're, 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 they're getting better. It has you know? to get better. Yeah, and it has to get better, correct. Uh, um, but it just, it, there, there's, so there's a lot of people that I get calls constantly about how, what can we do? You know, yeah. what can we do? And this mm -hmm. is a perfect, perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity. I hope that, uh, that definitely um, much success on, on this project, which, which you don't really need it because it sounds like you guys got a great model and, and it's been nothing but success. How many of these uh, veterans projects were in Merrimack Valley um, at, besides the Par Parker one now and then you have the uh, Phillips? Anything outside anywhere else? We do. We have prospects for, for land acquisition in Andover, North Andover. But you guys uh, been in though for a couple of years. We have, yeah. yeah. We've built in Methuen, we built in Haverhill. You built in Methuen? We have. Oh. We want to build in Haverhill again and it was just announced today in the, Newberry, the Newburyport Daily News that we received a gift of a, of a parcel of land in Salisbury from a bank, the Institution for Savings Bank, 1.8 acres, and that's going to be our first ever build. What's the criteria level for that one? <laughs> We're still working on that one, but we just got the land, so we have a lot of work to do before we start they building. Can't be but selfish. I will say this: uh, this veterans build on a duplex on Phillips Street. Uh, yeah, please. We want to do that. it right. Yeah. We want it to be a win-win. And win -win. it's a duplex, so it just to be two, two, two families. families. Yep, two yep, families are going to be there. And we want to do it well. Uh, we have uh, received word from Charlie Baker's office that he wants to visit this site on yes, November 11th. That. Yes, uh, which is uh, Veterans Day. There you go. Yeah, and I think Jamie Melendez, uh, we right after or oh, during our conversation, stated that he'd like to uh, do the uh, Veterans Day uh, um, ceremony at that location. So yeah. that's going to be that's going to be phenomenal. I can't In wait an for ideal that. world, Charlie Baker will hand the keys to two families for these homes on November 11th. Wow. And we want to work with the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center and other wow. veterans organizations to do a veterans build every year, if possible. I would love to do one every year. Well, I'm going to be here and I'm going to probably, I don't know, just um, <coughs> invite myself here now. But <laughs> I'd love to, uh, New England Veterans Liberty House, partner up with you guys and see what we could do Excellent. Uh, next year. And I mean, we have a few uh, contacts here with other uh, general contractors that I've worked with in the past. Um, again, we have a great relationship with the counselors and the mayor here. So, yeah, let's continue this. And I think this is this is the, definitely a great initiative that you guys are uh, embarking on. And, and again, uh, VNOC has just been uh, a, a tremendous um, help, uh, not just in the, the city of Havel, but across the, the Merrimack Valley. Valley. Absolutely. Um, and um, someday I inspire to be uh, VNOC someday. Right? I'm sure John's going to like to hear that. Um, but yeah, and it's not about it's not about New England Veterans Liberty House. Let me just put that out there. It's not about VNOC. It's not about Veterans Inc. It's not about the Soldiers Home. It's not about VA. It's about being able to help a veteran. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Plain and simple. I don't look at it as, oh my God, this is comp, which which you have, and unfortunately, some other veterans organizations out there look at it as a competition. And you know what? I can never say that about VNOC. I can never say that about Veterans Inc. Uh, uh, military friends and families um, because at the end of the day it's it's resources that we're able to provide to a family or an individual mm -hmm. veteran and we're making their life whole again right and we all have one common goal and that's common good right and without that then what else do you have but I, I again I, I just can't uh, how many rooms, by the way, in that? In that? What's the square footage? Of uh, the home? This home, each home will be about 1,200 square feet. Uh, we're talking about three bedroom, one and a half bath, and um, there'll be parking spaces. And, and uh, this particular home, uh, near, not far from public transportation and Lawrence High School as well, has a beautiful view off the back deck. Uh, as it's being built, of some soccer fields and a, and mm -hmm. a park area, and I, I like it. I like yeah. this uh, this lot. It's it's going to be a nice yeah. home for I'm two veterans families. Looking forward to it. We're running out of time, uh, Roxanne and Randy. So um, the floor is yours. Is there anything that you like to uh, specifically mention, or any other your know, websites and whatnot? So that's your camera. Please feel free <laughs> and uh, shoot away. MerrimackValleyHabitat.org is the website. There is a lot more information there. 
about the criteria for our family application process. Our uh, contact information for Roxana Moda is there. Uh, uh, and uh, we'd love to hear from any candidate families. Uh, frankly, we'd love to hear from any uh, donors or volunteers or others who are interested Absolutely. in helping with this process. Absolutely. Uh, we have a volunteer coordinator. We have a, a website. Part of our website is where volunteers sign up for the builds. And if you're interested in working with Habitat or applying for the Veterans Build, uh, we'd love to hear from you. What's your them. website again, please? MerrimackValleyHabitat.org. Beautiful. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and if you don't mind, d Roxanne, d any information that you wanted to share? Yes. Okay. Um, you can call me 978-681-8858. Um, uh, My name is Roxana, and I will be available for you any anytime. If you have any questions, you can call me. And okay. what's your extension number? Uh, 15. Beautiful. And, and and just in case uh, if you need to get Randy, I don't know if I have it, but if you want to call <laughs> extension Randy 11. Himself, extension <laughs> 11. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So thank you very much for gracing us with your presence. I think that what you guys are doing is remarkable. God bless you. you too. Congratulations on that house. I mean, again, um, much, much, much success on that house. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us. Again, like I always say uh, at the end of our shows, go out there and make a difference in someone's life today.